<sighs> so we're going to be talking about two films today, not just one. We're going to talk about two, and these two films completely exceeded my expectations. I don't want to discredit them. I I'm, I didn't go into them like expecting a complete shit show. I I heard good things about each of these films, uh, but. I didn't expect them to, you know, be as good as they were, if that makes sense, which I know that's kind of a, I don't, I don't want that to sound bad. It's just, I really enjoyed these films. That's what I'm trying to say. And those films are Amulets and The Cursed. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to discredit them at all. I was still excited to watch them. I was still going to watch them either way. I actually wanted to see Amulets in theaters, but I didn't get a chance to. Uh, I've just been really busy with post-production on The Hunt for August Red. But The Cursed was one that I had heard people talk about, and it got me really excited. Uh, and I probably wouldn't have even bothered checking it out if I didn't hear people talk about it because, I mean, seriously, what what kind of advertisement and marketing is going on for this film? Seriously, like, I think the reviews on IMDb are like 7,000. This film stars Boyd Holbrook, by the way. He was in uh, the, the most recent Predator movie, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be in Indiana Jones. Uh, it's written and directed by Sam Ellis. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. And then, of course, Ambulance is Michael Bay. You know, it's a uh, total nonstop bayham. But let's talk about The Cursed first. Now, this film, looking at it, it's called The Cursed. It's a werewolf film. I don't really want to say that. I put that in quotes, but I'm not going to spoil anything because I really like the take that they, uh, you know, the, the, the direction of the film. I like the new take of, I, I don't even want to say werewolves, uh, but The Cursed. I mean, you can't get a better title than that, right? This film needs better marketing, and I would love to see it get a re-release. I doubt it. I would love to see Maybe it could come to Netflix or Hulu and actually be marketed the right way, because this film is good, and we we don't get films like this really anymore at all. Like, I mean, in, in terms of, uh, you know, not not necessarily the originality, but just sort of the, the scope and uh, the time period and, and sort of, you know, like just you can tell that Sam Ellis had a lot of say in this film. Um, it did feel like it, it was slow. It was a it was a slow burn at an hour and 51 minutes. It felt pretty slow. It felt a lot slower than Ambulance. That was like two hours and 16 minutes. And the, uh, the, the credits were like a minute and a half, two minutes for Ambulance. Um, but I enjoyed The Curse and I enjoyed... Uh, the, the, the atmosphere of the film, that's one thing that the film did really, really well. Well, it did multiple things really, really well, but it, the atmosphere was really, really good. The, the the only gripe that I have besides the pacing is, you know, there were some scenes where I feel like it was trying to be scary, jump scary, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't get scared by jump scares anymore. That's just not who I am. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, I love it when I do, though, you know, like I, I don't find jump scares cheap at all because... I don't know. They just don't affect me anymore. But I'm seeing the black phone Thursday, so hopefully I've, I've heard some. There's some jump scares in that film, but uh, but yeah, the cursed. If you guys have not had a chance to check this out, definitely check it out. It really is worth the watch. And now we're talking about a film that I literally just watched maybe 30 minutes ago. It is directed by Michael Bay, and that is Ambulance with L.A. in the middle. <laughs> this stars Jake uh, Gyllenhaal. I'm actually going to look at these names because I'm probably going to butcher them. Uh, Abdul. Mateen the second, uh, and then Aliza Gonzalez. So yeah, I mean, Jake Gyllenhaal. I love him in anything that he's in. I love seeing Jake Gyllenhaal in films. I don't know why, but it's like any time that I see a Jake Gyllenhaal film, it's almost a comfort movie. I I, I can't explain it. Like I I don't know. I just I can't explain it. Uh, guys, this film was great. This film was awesome. I I thought Ambulance was a very good time. Now, was it corny at times? Yes. Here's the thing about Michael Bay. I feel like he could take just a normal script, j just something that's meant to be completely dramatic, something that's, you know, meant, like, I don't know. I, I feel like he could take, a, let, let's think of a film here, a David Lynch screenplay, okay? We're just going to say this. We're, just, we're not going to go in any deeper than this because I don't need to. Uh, I think this is kind of pointless, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. He could take a David Lynch screenplay and just make it like the next Transformers. I mean, he could literally make it like the next big blockbuster. I mean, Michael Bay is good for that. The writing at times did feel a little like only like in the dialogue department. You know, there were some things that were said where I was I was like, hmm, you were really funny a second ago. 
but that's that's few and far between. I don't want to discredit the writing or anything for this film because it actually is a pretty well written film. It's just there were some things, you know, and and maybe it, it's meant to be goofy. I'm pretty sure. I mean, this is a Michael Bay film, but uh, you know, there's also some really serious moments in this. I mean, it really did hit all the story beats. Um, and it, like I said, it's a solid film for a Michael Bay film. It's and and I know Michael Bay gets a bad rap. You know, he he. He doesn't deserve it. I mean, he really does. He puts a lot of care on the screen. There were there were some shots in this where it kind of looks like went back and forth, back and forth. It was really jarring. The editing was really jarring. I'm pretty sure that was a that was more of a creative design choice though. Uh, but it was jarring, and at, at times it was downright comedic. Um, still, this film did not fail to keep me entertained for its almost two and a half hour runtime. Uh, and, and it's all, it was almost like every, it was showing me a new angle basically every second. That's what it felt like. Um, if you were to take this and just say, Hey, it's about a guy, his wife, um, uh, I believe she had cancer. He's trying to afford an experimental surgery. So he goes on this bank heist, uh, with Jake Gyllenhaal's character. And then they're on the run in an ambulance while trying to keep a cop alive. If you would have told me that, that doesn't really sound as original, you know, as it could be. I mean, seriously, you know, you say all that stuff. I mean, that really does tip. It feels like your typical bank robbery film. There's nothing really out of the ordinary there. Uh, but, and you, and here's the thing. This premise, this very premise, you really do see it a lot in like low budget films and um, TV shows. Like I said, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to water down anything here, but it's the truth. And the way that this film was executed, guys, this film was, was, oh my gosh, the way this film was made, it was impressive. It really was impressive. I know this film probably had like $100 million behind it, but it was very, very, very impressive. I mean, some of the camera shots, some of the movements, uh, the performances were on par. I mean, the, the performances were great. I mean, the perform- I mean you, you have an all-star cast here, so I mean, the performances are going to be great. But man, the cinematography was just very, very impressive. I mean, it literally felt like for just maybe take five minutes of the film, it felt like there were like a thousand different cameras placed in different directions. Now, like I said, that can get jarring at times. I am the type of person I prefer to keep my camera still for the most part, especially when it comes to dialogue, unless I'm doing a tracking shot or something. But this film, oh my gosh, like this is just insane the camera movements with the dialogue it didn't work with me as much as it probably could have because like i said it's it, it wasn't just the camera movement it was the editing and stuff but guys this film blew me away it's by far my favorite michael bay film don't sleep on this ambulance was a good time but i just wanted to talk about two films like you know that, that i feel like aren't being talked about anymore and I feel like they should be because especially the curse because I actually I had a good time with these and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would too uh it's just it's weird with films the marketing is kind of I remember and and this was before this is like pre-pandemic like I remember seeing movie trailers like this that this that this that most of the time I figure out a new movie from like my Instagram feed Seriously, like not even from YouTube, and I'm subscribed to like most of the major, you know, media outlets. It it's usually Instagram, and it's from you know other followers, people that I follow or people that follow me. I mean, that's literally how I hear about a lot of these uh, new films, and it kind of sucks, you know. Like, I mean, it it really does, and I don't know exactly what's going on with that. Hopefully, it does improve, um, but you know, we'll just have to see. But guys, don't sleep on those films. Thank you. I have a good time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. I hope you guys are staying safe out there, and I'll see you guys next time.